Yeah, I think we're going to make a start of feedings. We're going to go. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Jeffrey Bertram. I'm chairman of the Barnes Graham Charitable Trust. Thank you for coming to this special event that celebrates the opening of Balamongo House as the Trust Centre. This house was the home of St Andrew's born artist Wilhelmina Barnes Graham. It had been lived in by her mother's side of the family since 1884, and she inherited it from her aunt Mish, Mary Mish, in 1960. Willie, as she was known, was born in St Andrews in 1912 and educated locally at St Catherine's School for Girls on North Street before the family moved away to Blainfield in Stirlingshire in 1924. She attended Edinburgh College of Art between 1931 and 1937, moving to St Ives in 1940, later to become a significant contributor to what came to be known as the St Ives Group, alongside Ben Nicholson and Barbara Hepworth, Patrick Heron and Roger Hilton. And further details of her life could be found in the leaflets she was presented with on arrival. When we established the Barnes Graham Charitable Trust in 1987, from the outset, she hoped that the Balmonga House would become the home for her trust as a visual arts resource centre. The trust became fully active upon Willie's passing on the 26th of January 2004 and was initially headed by her friend and assistant, Rowan James, who had managed her professional business activities, lived in and cared for the house and without whom Willie's career path might not have risen as sharply as it did in her final decade. No history of Willie or the house should underestimate Rowan's influence. Tragically, Rowan died at the end of January 2005, as one of the key architects of the Trust and its future plans, her, lot, her loss had been acute. In realising Willie's ambition, the, the trustees have undertaken the complete refurbishment of the house and have tried to keep the integrity of the house as Willie would have known it. The decor is understated to allow the art to breathe. Selected pieces of antique furniture have been refinished and put back in their original places. Personal objects sighted around ledges and mantelpieces. With the completion of the refurbishment and in keeping with the house as a place of creativity, we have started a program of artist and writer residencies and we are delighted that the current incumbents, the artist Lindsay Sekovitz and writer Damon Galbert, have joined us this evening. The residencies help keep the house alive. The spirit of artistic activity continues on. Besides being at the heart of the trust activities, the house offers, it can be offered as a resource centre for researchers, not only on Willie's life and work, but also on modern art in general, as Willie's library and archive contain some fascinating material not least of which are art magazines and catalogues spanning back over 50 years. We are also keen to be accessible to local schools and colleges. A summer school here, held here uh, this summer, for example, was hugely successful. Uh, the event was organised with five contemporary art and craft, from whom the Trust has commissioned a special education pack for secondary schools, and I'd particularly like to thank Susan Davis, who's done an outstanding job in preparing this. We are now considering how we can use the house in other ways, for small meetings or receptions, for example. The house is a marvellous facility. It's on an intimate scale, secluded, comfortable, something of a sanctuary. We are looking into making the house more publicly accessible with a series of open day events throughout 2013, so that visitors can come to see and learn something about Willie's life and work. We will make announcements about these in due course. In the meantime, I hope that what you see on the walls today gives you a flavour of Willie's achievements. So this is an important moment in the life of Belmongo House, in this year that is also the centenary of Willie's birth. 2012 has seen exhibitions held across the UK, with a major show being Wilhelmina Barnes Graham, a Scottish artist in St Ives, which opens at the City Arts Centre in Edinburgh on the 24th of November. I hope you all get to see this wonderful exhibition that has been curated by Lynn Green, 
whose book, W. Barnes Graham, The Studio Life, was reissued in an expanded form at the end of last year by Lance Humphreys, whom the Trust also supported in publishing Anne Gunn's catalogue of Willie's prints. Also for 2012, I'd like to point out to you Tim Fitzpatrick's fine film on Willie, which has been specially commissioned, which can be seen in the studio through there, and following this ceremony in the dining room. Now it gives me, on behalf of the trustees, great pleasure to welcome Kirsty Walk, who has kindly agreed to declare Balmonga House open. Born in Dumfries, I'm sure you are all aware Kirsty is a well-known award-winning television journalist and is the presenter of Newsnight and the cultural weekly, The Review Show. Over the years, she has done a number of series on art and architecture, so reporting on and supporting art and culture is not new territory for Kirsty. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Kirsty and ask her to say a few words and then unveil the commemorative plaque that celebrates this occasion. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I obviously didn't know Willie Barnes Graham, but I can imagine that she would be thrilled to see her house open to what essentially is a very informal party, because many of you here uh, knew her and many of you have carried on her work, and I think the trustees are to be congratulated at this wonderful restoration, you kind of feel that Willoughby Barnes Graham is still here. And it's actually quite interesting when you see this rather lovely, handsome, benign looking woman, you forget that she had a very hard road to travel as an artist. And actually, what she achieved was very unusual for a woman in her position in Scottish society. It was all very well for women to take up uh, art as a kind of watercolour pastime. But to be a, a, a fully professional artist, and not only that, to be an abstract artist in Scotland was clearly something that Scottish people couldn't quite get their heads around, because as part of the St Ives group, she wasn't really that well known, and for me, she was part of the St Ives group, but I didn't really know anything about her, I knew about William Scott, and obviously the others who've just been mentioned. But I think it's extraordinary that when you see her work with the other artists' work, she, there's absolutely no question that she was in a par with them, no question at all. And no question that she kept experimenting during her life. And in a sense, as Lynn writes in her book, her, her coming back to Scotland could be seen as some kind of emotional retreat because it was born out of quite a lot of personal hardship. But on the other hand, it allowed her to thrive and to continue creating great and different work until she died. Latterly, I understand, making prints a collaboration which she thoroughly enjoyed. It, to me, is a real problem in a way that there are so few women artists of the 20th century or even recognised who've come out of the United Kingdom. But surely, with the establishment of this house and the kind of huge international um, audience in St Andrews, that perhaps, uh, obviously, people in the past have done a lot to bring her to the public's attention, but really she's not nearly as well known as she should be. So, with a bit of luck, this house, and indeed things like the wonderful Duke of Carpet downstairs, which has been commissioned for the house, the fact that there are prints here, the fact that people can come and use this house, and that the trust is very open to unusual ways of using this house, means that it will be a great force for art and good and culture in Scotland in the 21st century. So it gives my great pleasure, and the plaque is not actually on the outside of the house, as you might notice. <laughs> uh, so very, I'm very carefully doing this, but I'd like to declare Amanda House open. Yeah.